Uh, this is the Bible Touchstone here, just responding to a video from Bobo345. Enjoy the video. He does a video response to somebody, and it's called Regarding Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, versus Oneness Theology. In the video, he does give a short defense for Jesus' name, only baptism. And we wouldn't be having this discussion here if it didn't have serious soteriological implications. So I wanted to address some of these things here. And basically, by Jesus' name only baptism, we're talking about an incantation of the name of Jesus as a specific baptismal rite or formula. And if you can't do it, then you're not baptismally regenerated. So only those who have been performing this since the non-Trinitarian sects have shown up in recent contemporary church history have anybody been saved since the Paleo Church in the Book of Acts? So, I want to go over these things, and I do want to stress first that my thesis here is that the Church has certainly always baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I'm not trying to get over this issue here when we're talking about Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. I'm not suggesting that the name of the Father is Jesus, and that the name of the Son is Jesus, and the name of the Holy Spirit is Jesus. That has categorically has nothing to do with what I'm talking about here. By in the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm talking about by the authority of Jesus, as he's commanded and instructed us to do in the new covenant, that we are obedient and we baptize in his authority and we, you know, it has power in his name. And it works effectually. I'm not talking about an incantation, a conjuring up of the name of Jesus, or invoking it in that kind of formulaic way. That's not what I'm talking about at all. And when I look at uh, church hi church history or early church writers, whenever they talk about these things, this this con uh, controversy never shows up. It's not. It's a recent debate, and it doesn't have anything to do with baptism at all. So we're going to look at these themes here, and I'm not trying to say that the church was disobedient or when they were baptizing in the name of Jesus in Acts. I'm not saying they were disobedient to the command that Jesus gave to them, but I wanted to define what that really means in the name of. And I think Bobo 345 addresses something very important here. He says that if we were having a discussion, and he says that something is cool, or that's cool, man, and he meant figuratively or idiomatically as an expression, colloquial cant, he's trying to say that something is hip or trendy or something like that. And we wrote it down, and 2,000 years later, somebody came back and read it, and they didn't understand the, you know, the idiomatic expression. They might think, well, hey, he's meaning cold or cool to the touch. So he says that we would understand the lingo, or contemporarily we'd know what we're talking about, but unless they use a grammatical historical method of interpreting what we were saying, they would have no clue of what we're saying. So that's what I wanted to hit up here on this point. And I do want to go over some, uh, there's a precedent for you know, baptizing, when we you say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, that that is shown through early Christian writings, and in this ecumenical age, and for example, there's books of order, and stuff like that, that uh, churches today have instituted baptism to follow a formula, but baptism isn't the formula here, it's through the washing of the Holy Ghost here, and this baptismal rite here, is, it's if you say it wrong or anything like that, these instructions aren't given in the Didash. These instructions uh, aren't given in the Holy Bible or the Holy Writ. So we're going to look at what this means. But when we do all these things, it certainly is in the name of the, by the authority of Jesus Christ. So we're going to look here. Uh, Justin's first apology and the anti-Nicene fathers. Uh, also got here early Christian fathers. Uh, edited by Henry Bethenson, and this is Justin's first apology, where he says, For in the name of God, and of the Father, and of the Lord of the universe, and of our Savior Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit, they then received the washing with water. He goes on to discuss these things. First, he says, In the, the name of God and the Father, or in the name of God the Father, and Lord of the universe, he who leads the, to the laver of the person, is to be washed, calling him by this name alone. But, he goes on to say, For no one can utter the name of the ineffable God. And what I'm talking about, he goes on to say in another place, and the Jews even to now teach the nameless God spake to Moses. It's not, he already said that God the Father, Lord of the universe, has a name, it's just ineffable, it's taboo. And there's, for example, there's modern corruptions of the name of the Lord, 
For example, you hear Jehovah, or it's a corrupted transliteration of the word, but we're talking about it's ineffable, it's ta taboo. And it goes on to say that, and this washing is called illumination, and in the name of Jesus Christ, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, in the name of the Holy Ghost, who through the prophets foretold all about Jesus, who is illuminated and is washed. So, I mean, there's some sort of precedent here that we've always been saying it as the Lord instructed, but it's not that formula, that formula that makes it baptism. Uh, also here, the didash. The procedure for baptism is as followed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. It goes on to say... Uh, that you pour water three times over the person's head and you say that. And it's not pouring the water three times that makes a baptism, but that's how we've instituted it in order. Um, Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42, where it says, you receive a prophet in the prophet's name, you'll receive a prophet's reward. Same thing in the name of a disciple. It means in the authority, if you receive a prophet in their own authority, that's all you're going to get from them. It goes on uh, Matthew chapter 21, the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's what we mean here by in the name of Jesus Christ here. Same as uh, Mark chapter 11 verse 10, the uh, kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. It's not like somebody was standing back there and saying, I received him in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's Jesus on a donkey. Um, Acts chapter 9 verse 27 and 29 where Barnabas he takes Paul to the Apostles and he says that Paul has been preaching boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus um, that's what we're talking about by the authority of the Lord Jesus he was commissioned and his apostleship was given in that uh, it says that they were commanded to be baptized in the name of the Lord that is the commandment was what they were uh, was the authority of the Lord um, also Acts chapter 2 where it says you know repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, then it also includes, like I look over, uh, over at uh, Young's literal translation, the literal translation of the Bible, and um, and I, I know I know he's you know Bobo three four five is you know King James only probably or something like that. But when we take good care at the um, the syntax and those kind of things, we see that even repentance is in the name of the Lord by the authority of God. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, when you're gathered together, be gathered in the name of the Lord. Well, we also are not only washed in the name of the Lord, we're also uh, sanctified in the name of the Lord, we're also justified in the name of the Lord. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. Do all things in the name of the Lord, giving thanks in the name of the Lord. This is throughout the uh, scriptures, being anointed in the name of the Lord. The prophets have spoken in the name of the Lord. That's exactly what we mean when we say we're being baptized. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as always, grace be to you.